lower jaw bone that consists of a horseshoe shaped or a u shaped anterior part called as body of the mandible both posterior ends of the body of the mandible will get expanded upwards and that will form this expanded upward part called as ramus so there are two ramae for the mandible one is on the right side and another ramus is on the left side the body of the mandible consists of two surfaces and two borders the surface which is facing outwards this is called as outer surface and the surface of the body inside this is called as inner surface and again the body consists of two borders an upper border and the lower border the lower border is called as base of the mandible on each side of this triangular mental protuberance just beneath the incisive teeth we have a depression called as incisive fossa at the interval between lower premolar teeth we have foramen in the outer surface this is called as mental foramen so through this mental foramen mental nerves and vessels passes further behind we have an oblique line in the outer surface this oblique line if we trace upwards that will continue as the anterior border of ramus of mandible let us learn the inner surface of body of mandible so in the inner surface of body of mandible we have a line here called as mylohyoid line this mylohyoid line provides attachment to a muscle called as mylohyoid muscles this mylohyoid line divides the inner surface of body of mandible to two parts one depression above a concave depression this is called as sublingual fossa because at this part only the sublingual salivary gland will be lodging and below the mylohyoid line there is another depression called as submandibular fossa there you can see the submandibular salivary gland very close to the third molar tooth so this part so here we have attachment of the pterygo mandibular raphe and just behind the mylohyoid line at this part we have the attachment of the superior constrictor muscle fibers and in between the posterior end of mylohyoid line here and the third molar tooth that area will be closely related with a nerve called as lingual nerve the lingual nerve is related here before entering to the tongue anteriorly in the posterior aspect of the symphysis mende we can appreciate genial tubercles in fact there are four genial tubercles two above and two below so these genial tubercles which are almost in the midline these are providing attachment to genio glossus and genio hyoid muscles respectively the superior genial tubercles are providing attachment to genio glossus muscles and inferior will provide attachment to genio hyoid muscles coming back to the upper border of the body of mandible so this is the alveolar process bearing sockets for the lower set of the teeth and again the lower border lower border is called as base of the mandible so this lower border of the mandible that will continue as the lower border of the ramus lower border of the body will continue as the lower border of the ramus further this lower border of the ramus will turn upwards to form the posterior border this lower border of the mandible throughout will provide attachment for the investing layer of deep cervical fascia so in the lower border on either board side of the symphysis mende we have a depression called as digastric fossa this digastric fossa provides attachment for the anterior bellies of digastric on either side next let us learn about the ramus of mandible so we have two ramae right ramus and left ramus so the ramus in fact is a flattened and upward projection from the posterior end of body of the mandible so this is the body of mandible this is its posterior aspect this posterior aspect will become more flattened and that will turn upwards this quadrilateral part is called as ramus of mandible so each ramus consists of four borders 
an upper border, lower border, anterior border and posterior border. And again the ramus shows two surfaces. One surface is outer surface or lateral surface. Another surface is the inner surface or medial surface. The lower surface will lower border will continue as the lower border of body of mandible and again this lower border will turn upwards to continue as the posterior border and this part between the posterior border and inferior border of ramus that will form an angle this is called as angle of mandible further the anterior border of the ramus will continue as the oblique line in the outer surface the upper border of the ramus of mandible that is notched that will show a concave depression here. This concave depression is formed because anteriorly that will form an upward projection. This is called as coronoid process. Further behind there is a transverse projection. This is called as condyloid process. The coronoid process is a beak like structure upward projection that will provide attachment of the temporalis muscle. And this temporalis muscle further that its attachment or insertion will be extending towards the anterior border of ramus. And the condyloid process is an upward bulging and its transverse diameter will be more. This is articular. This condyloid process will articulate with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone to form an important joint called as TMJ or temporomandibular joint. So this is or this condyloid process is also called as head of the mandible and just beneath that we have a small constricted portion this portion we can call as neck of the mandible. So the part of the upper border between the condyloid process and the coronoid process this part is called as mandibular notch. Through this mandibular notch the masseteric nerves and vessels passes from medial aspect to the lateral aspect. The outer surface of the ramus of mandible shows roughened area especially towards the antero inferior aspect. This roughened area is because of attachment of a muscle called as masseter muscle. Further, posterior superior aspect of the ramus of mandible will be related to the parotid salivary gland. Next is inner surface of ramus of mandible. So this is the inner surface of ramus of mandible. So the most prominent feature in the inner surface is a foramen here. This is called as mandibular foramen. Through the mandibular foramen, inferior alveolar nerve and vessels passes. And this mandibular foramen will continue within the body of the mandible. And that part, that channel is called as mandibular canal. The inferior alveolar nerves and vessels while passing through this canal that will provide tiny twigs for each teeth. And after passing through this, these inferior alveolar nerves and vessels, those structures are emerging through the mental foramen. The anteromedial aspect of this mandibular foramen shows a tongue-like upward projection. This is called as lingula. This lingula will provide attachment to a ligamentous structure called as sphenomandibular ligament. Again, in the medial surface, you can appreciate a groove here. This is called as mylohyoid groove. Through this mylohyoid groove, mylohyoid nerve sun vessel passes. Here, this is the mylohyoid line. Here, we have a muscle called as mylohyoid. And the nerves and vessels for this mylohyoid muscle that is mylohyoid vessels and nerves that will pass through this mylohyoid groove in order to reach to that muscle. Again in the inner surface very close to the angle of mandible we can see a roughened area. So this roughened area is for the attachment of a muscle called as medial pterygoid muscle. The constricted portion beneath the condyloid process called as neck of the mandible and again here in the neck of the mandible at this depression we have a muscle attachment that is the lateral pterygoid muscle that's why this depression is called as pterygoid fovea to which lateral pterygoid muscle is inserted 
little more details about the angle of mandible. The angle of mandible is the angle between the posterior border and the inferior border of ramus. And this angle of mandible will be around 110 to 115 degree in adult. But remember, in extremely old age people and also in the newborn babies, this angle can be around 140 degree. It is more obtuse. This angle of mandible provides attachment to a ligament called as stylomandibular ligament. Next, the mental foramen. Usually that will be at the midway between the upper border and the lower border of the body of mandible. But in old age people, you can clearly see after the loss of the teeth, you can clearly see the position of the mental foramen may change. The mental foramen will be very close to the upper border. And here in adults that is midway between upper border and the lower border. 